I'd like to give you a quick tutorial on how to actually draw a remain surface using standard math packages like Wolfram Mathematica, for example. And as an example, let us try to draw a remain surface of a function which is already familiar to us, say square root of 4 minus z squared, but with a curved branch cut. So here is our function. And the branch cut is upper semicircle with radius 2 connecting points negative 2 and 2. Like this. First of all, we understand that this remain surface will have two sheets, and as a result, we'll have self intersections. The best way to represent remain surfaces with finite amount of sheets and finite branch cuts is to draw sheets as inclined disks. So our plan is as follows we will draw an inclined disk and cut it with a knife along the branch cut. And since our function is gapped at the branch cut, we'll bend different banks of the branch cut in opposite directions, upwards and downwards. Then we'll draw a second remain sheet with opposite inclination and make the same cut. And finally, we'll glue the two sheets along this branch cut. So how do we do this from a mathematical point of view? And here we follow the recipe of three mathematicians from Berlin University, and we attach the corresponding link in the supplement to this video. Their paper is precisely about generating meshes of Riemann surfaces. What they suggest doing is as follows. We represent a sheet as a plot of some function u of x and y. And it turns out that harmonic functions represent quite nice looking surfaces. So what we are going to do, we will simply solve a two-dimensional Laplace equation for function u of x and y with appropriate boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions are dictated by conditions which I just outlined. So let us draw a first sheet. It is inclined, and for simplicity, we separate it into upper and lower halves. Also, we want it to be symmetric with respect to plus minus z reflection. So, as we'll represent it as an altitude, as a function of x and y, it will lie on x-axis. So, let us see how it is done with the help of Mathematica. First, let us introduce the upper half of the disk. But initially, the disk itself. Let's denote it as omega 1, 1 which is equal to disk with the center at the origin and say of radius 5. Since we need only upper half of the disk, let us subtract the respective rectangle. So omega 1, 2 is equal to region difference of omega 1, 1 and rectangle with lower left angle minus 6 minus 6 and upper right angle 0 and 6. So let us plot it just to make sure that it's correct. Oops, there is a mistake. Okay, let me correct it. Yeah, that is it. And also we need to subtract the region cut by the branch cut. So we introduce a new region omega 1 3 which is our half of the disk and this time we again make region difference and we subtract the disk of radius 2 yeah here is our region and then we solve the corresponding Laplace equation so nd solve value Laplace operator in the x and y plane of function u is equal to zero. And then we add corresponding directly boundary conditions. First of all, the condition for outer edge of our disk should reflect its inclination. So directly a condition u of x and y is equal to y. As x belongs to the segment from negative 5 and 5, and y belongs to the upper arc, 25 minus x squared. The next boundary condition represents the connection of the upper half of this sheet with the lower half, namely, they should coincide and be equal to 0 along x axis. And that means that u of x and y is equal to 0. If y is equal to 0, while x belongs to the segment from minus 5 to minus 2 and from 2 to 5. Of course, we excluded the region of the branch cut, where actually two halves shouldn't coincide. So here we go. Yeah, 
And finally, the boundary condition at the branch cut. As we remember, the upper half of the sheet should be bent upwards, while the lower half downwards. As a result, the boundary condition along x-axis should remind you of a like, P shape. As a result, the boundary function should interpolate between 0 and its value at the upper bank of the cut. So it's up to us to choose its value. And the good value is actually 6, I checked it. So here we go. As I said earlier, the interpolating function should be equal to 0 at the edges of the branch cut, while it should be equal to, say, 6 in the middle. Something like this. This way x belongs to the strip from negative 2 to 2. Y y belongs to the branch cut. It's square root of 4 minus x squared. And I think that's it for boundary conditions. So let's solve it. So let us solve this equation for u function in our region. So here it is. And now let's plot this solution. So let's denote this function u1. And here we go. And here is our desired plot. And let me slightly correct the aspect ratio for you. So here is our upper half of the first ribbon sheet. Now let us build the lower half. And the lower half is built in a similar manner. The only difference is that we'll have to deal with lower semi-disc and we'll have to change slightly the boundary conditions. So let's do this. First of all, let us introduce the lower semi-disc. So omega 1 to a is equal to basically the same region but we'll subtract a different rectangle now. So let's see if it works. Oops, let me correct this. Now it should work. Yep. Now we should actually add additional semicircle stemming from the branch cut. So let's do this. Now we'll use region union. And let's see if it worked. Oops, sorry, I forgot A here. Yeah, perfect. Well, we see that it has some artifacts at the edges, but probably it would be okay when we solve the corresponding Laplace equations. And now time has come to find the function for our second half of the Riemann sheet. So let's call it U2. And the only difference is now we have a different domain. The boundary condition at the outer edge is the same, because it's the same inclination. But the boundary condition at the branch cut is different, because it's bent downwards. So we change 6 to minus 6 here. Alright, so here is our function u2. And let us plot it. And let me draw it for you in the same coordinate frame. Oops, sorry, something went wrong. Let's see. Sorry, I forgot to change the domain of y when I set the boundary condition for the lower arc. Of course, it's minus square root of 25 minus x squared because it's lower semicircle. Okay, let's try again. And here it is. 
our first streaming sheet is ready. And here we see precisely the branch cut of the correct shape. And as you see, its banks are indeed bent differently. Although personally, I would like the edges of the branch cut to be pronounced more sharply. So I'll introduce a different interpolating function. Not x over 2 squared, but x over 2, say, say to the power of 30. Let's see. Okay, that's more like it. And then we build a second remain sheet. The only difference from the first one with a different inclination and slightly different boundary conditions. So here we go, the upper half. It's almost identical to the upper half of the first sheet. We call it function v1. But we change the inclination at the outer edge and we change the boundary condition because the upper bank of its branch cut should be glued to the lower bank of the branch cut of the first ribbon sheet, hence minus sign here. So let's solve it. And let us plot it. And to differentiate it from the first ribbon sheet, let us change the color, turning it to red. And let us actually make it semi-transparent. And we remove the mesh. So let us see if it works. And here we go. So let us have a closer look at it. And you see that it is glued perfectly at the lower bank of the branch card. And now let's draw its second half. We call it V2, and again we just slightly change the boundary conditions, different inclination and different boundary condition at the branch cut, like this. And now let's draw it. So let's hope it works. Oops, I forgot to redefine here the region, so let's correct it. And here it is. Perfect ribbon surface. Here is its view from above. And here is how it is glued along the curved branch card. So now I hope you have some idea how to do this. In your homework you will actually have some problem it's precisely this Riemann surface. You will need to compute two interesting integrals. And now I think that's it for Riemann surfaces. So good luck with your homework exercises.